in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Tip on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm your host, known here on YouTube and many other places as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snout Number Seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend. Talik Ibn Ra. I would like to take a few moments from your busy schedule just to explain a little something, something. To give us more understanding because really that understanding should be simple but yet a little bit complex when we begin to study and research this particular topic. And I want to give you a reason to research and study this particular topic because there is great benefit for you and I when we begin to know. Those who don't want you to benefit, those who want to keep you in the dark, don't want you to research and study yourself. They want you to embrace this illusion that we have been born into. They want us to embrace and believe the things that they teach us in public school and colleges and universities that they control, that they created, not for the purpose to build you and I up, but as a means and a way to make us more of a better voluntary slave. That we will enjoy a slave-like condition, but yet given the illusion that we are free. And that is what the descendants of slaves born in America we face today. Many of us believe that we are free. And you have never been freed. You have been freed of chains, but technically, you, even as our ancestors, even as slaves, were free of chains because the slaves were able to run around the plantation. They were not wearing chains. The chains were for the rebellious brother and sister who wanted to run away from the plantation who wanted to defy the master so they were kept in change but as soon as you became a good boy as soon as you became a good girl they took the chains off of you just like your pet most of y'all even though there is a leash law most of y'all because you trust your pet you will go out of your house and walk your dog without a leash because this is a good slave for you. You trust your slave. And then it's very shocking when the slave do something that gets you in trouble because that dog should have been on a leash. The dog runs and bites another dog or a person or something like that. But if the dog did not show signs of obedience, of being a good pet slave, you would have never taken that dog off the leash. So the racist Caucasian people of America view us, and I say this with all due respect, but they view us as good dogs, good slaves, good boys and girls. And many times they can't help it in general conversation. They will call us a good boy. They'll pat you on your shoulder and sometimes on your head and they'll say, you a good boy not even realizing what they're saying, but they've been saying and calling us boys and girls for 400 years. That's a hard habit to break. <laughs> so, we've come to the point, brothers and sisters, and I want you to hear me out, whether you like me or not. 
I want you to hear me out as I make this point. There are two forces in this struggle called black liberation. Because both of them truly believe they are working for the best interest of our people. You have one side that many of us may call sambos and coons and handkerchief heads and dark Europeans, Uncle Toms. You have that side. And I'm not calling nobody a name. Your actions speak louder than words. But we do know that this side, a traitorous side, a Benedict Arnold side, is trying to vie for your mind. Then we have a side that is rebellious. That is like the runaway slave. The slave that the master had to keep in chains because they always wanted to run from the plantation. The late and great Malcolm X said that there are two types of slaves. You had the house Negro and the field Negro. So we're going to use that analogy. The house Negro and the field Negro. Who should we listen to? Who is really looking out for our best interests? Is it the house Negro? Because sincerely in their hearts, they believe they are Americans and they are doing everything they can to try to make life better for those who are the descendants of slaves born in America. We call ourselves black, African-American. Some of us still call ourselves Negro. Some of us still call ourselves colored. Then you have those who shout black power. You have those who are in the street claiming that they are black Hebrew Israelites and black Moors. And they are of the, the children of Kemet and so forth. It goes on and on and on. But they are black and they are proud. They will be considered, and myself, we will be considered field Negroes. So, just to be fair to both sides, I want to try to make an, a, an, a simple analogy or bring us a simple example of who is who. With all respect to those who may be called a house Negro and with all respect to those who may be called Theo Negro, we really want to get down to the real nitty gritty. That's a quote from the famous sister Gladys Knight and the Pips. Let's get down to the real nitty gritty. I'm going to use this as a very short example. <clears throat> We're going to use basic law. Some of you know about the law, but you don't know about the law. So you need a lawyer when you get in trouble. There's all types of law. Family law, personal injury law, criminal law. Um, you can go on and on. Law about boats and ships. Law about inheritances. It's all types of law. But we're going to use two of our most often uh, viewed or seen or that what we most experience. Personal injury law and criminal law. Now y'all know we know about criminal law. Many of us are ex-convicts. We've been to jail even if it's a traffic ticket. So we know about criminal law. Many of us know about personal law. We've been harmed by, we've been in car accidents. We've uh, eaten, got food poisoning in some restaurant. So we know about personal law. We know about criminal law. So I'm going to use the, this form of basic law to try to bring example to us whether we should listen to the house Negro on this side or the field Negro on this side. And I'm going to slide a little bit 
over him because that's where I am. <laughs> I will be considered a house negro. Why do you need a lawyer? If you are in a car accident or even if you are arrested, you can handle the case yourself. Under the law, you have the right to represent yourself. But most people, even lawyers themselves, would not represent themselves. Why? Because many of us are ignorant to the law. We've gotten into something we have no real experience. We don't know the law. So you need a lawyer to help you with your case. So if you are in a car accident or if your wife had a baby and the baby you suspect has become or suffer from autism and the doctor is you believe is negligent. You need a civil attorney. You need someone to represent personal injury. If you are facing a traffic ticket or you've been charged with rape or murder or stalking or whatever, you need a criminal attorney. You call a lawyer because, number one, because you are ignorant of the process of law. You don't know. So you're calling somebody and you are willing to pay somebody to help you with your case. Now, what type of lawyer do you want? You want a good lawyer. You want a lawyer that will look out for your best interest. What's good for you? You don't want a lawyer that will settle in court for damages to you when you settle for five hundred dollars when actually you deserve a thousand and the lawyer will settle for the five hundred because they don't want to take the time and really don't want to fight your case and they're willing to just get it over with that type of lawyer is not looking out for your best interest because your best interest is a thousand dollars that's what you deserve so those of whom owe you the thousand dollars they are happy and glad because that keeps more money in their pocket. A real lawyer works for your best interest. You and my best interest. A real lawyer understands the monetary or other damages due to you. A real defense attorney works to get you free. Not to get you probation, not to uh, get you a less sentence. The job of a defense attorney is to get those charges that you face dismissed or do the best that they can. A lot of times, if they really work for you, it's according to what you're charged with because there's no guarantee. But a, a lawyer should be able to get the charges dismissed or reduced so low it ain't about nothing. That's a good attorney. Like I said, situations are different. But a good attorney always works for your best interest. And you can tell because that lawyer, that attorney that you hire, they almost become like family. They become personal. This becomes a personal vendetta for them just like you. They feel your hurt, your pain, and they won't be satisfied till you're satisfied, till there is a decent outcome to the situation. The fear Negro is the best lawyer because those who are in black liberation, those who represent black nationalism, black power, however you want to view it, these are persons looking out for our best interests. 
They do not want to settle. I do not want to settle for five hundred dollars when we deserve a thousand. I'm not going to settle for probation when you should be free. That is the mentality legally of the field Negro. We want what is ours. We want what we deserve. We deserve to be free and we deserve to get paid. Bottom line. But now you have the house Negro. Now see you have to, I know some of you, you agree with the house Negro mentality, but when you dealing with the house Negro mentality, they are lawyers. First of all, they don't understand the damages. They really don't know. And they are willing to settle for $20 when you deserve a thousand. That's the house Negro. And under the mentality of the house Negro, that's why our community continues to suffer to this day because since they are close to the Masa, the Masa listen to them and we continue to get scraps. We can continue to get little or nothing. And we sell out of court. And we end up in prison. And we end up in jail. We don't get probation because the house Negro is comfortable. They don't see black people as family. They see us as Americans. But they don't see us as Americans not getting our equal share out of this great nation because they have theirs. They are not concerned about your and my welfare. So the black community suffers due to handkerchief heads and dark Europeans and sambos. And with all due respect, even though the real Uncle Tom was a hero. You know what I mean when we say Uncle Tom. So we need, brothers and sisters, you need a good lawyer. You need good counsel. <laughs> counsel is somebody to bring you good advice that benefits you, that's looking out for your best interest. The house negro, the coon or the punch, punch monkey, the however you want to call them, the Benedict Arnold, the traitor, the Sambo, the, the house negro, they don't care about that. They have sold you out. And I can, and I do know that many of y'all have had lawyers that have sold you out. Then when you turn around and another lawyer tell you, you could have got a thousand. You settled for a hundred. You could have got a thousand. You could have, you only settled for two hundred. Then you angry and you mad and upset. But it's your fault because you can see very early. We can see that the house Negro is not looking out for the black community. They are looking out for their own self-interest because they're going to get paid. They got theirs. They have theirs. They don't care about what you get. The case is over. They got paid. Time to move on. Find the next victim. And see, many of us listen. We listen to the house Negro. Because we are ignorant of what has happened to us as a people in this nation. If you and I, if you really knew what happened to us, then you would never listen to a house Negro. You would never listen to uh, Larry Elders or Condoleezza Rice, Colin Powell, Bob Johnson, and a whole lot of the whole many uh, David James Manning. Or this guy called T-Mod, a different preacher. Y'all wouldn't give them a time of day because they're looking out for the best interest of the, of the defendant. How would you like to go to court and you are facing murder charges, but your lawyer is looking out for the best interest of the prosecutor, the people that's trying to send you to jail for life? Or give you the death penalty. The Sambo. The Uncle Tom. These cool handkerchief heads. Dark Europeans. They have and don't care. But they are wishing us. And have sentenced, sentenced the black man. And woman of America. The descendants of slaves. They have, they have helped sentence us to death. 
We are not African people anymore. We are dark skinned versions of white people. We love Jesus more than white people. We love apple pie more than white people. We love, we're more patriotic than anybody in this nation. But have less than everybody in this nation. How can you love this country so much and be so patriotic when the country don't give you nothing? But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said in his lessons, why does the black man or the Negro, why do we love white people? Because they give us nothing. And that's the point. How can you be happy with crumbs when you should be getting your own slice or even a whole loaf of bread? So, with this information, you can make up your own mind what you want to do. But as long as you side or have that house nigga mentality, you're never going to get nothing. You're always going to be singing, we shall overcome, but you're not going to overcome nothing. You're always going to be begging and pleading. You're always going to have a Trayvon Martin dead in the street. You're always going to have us locked up. You're always going to have us crackheads. You're always going to have all the problems that we face in the community. It's always going to be that way. Listening to them because the problem is the country itself, how they set it, set, set everything up against us. Hoping that we drown in these in the negativity and hope that we trip over the obstacles that they placed before us even before we were born. You got a problem, you black, and you think that you're a white man. There is no such thing as black culture. You're copying. You got your black version, your own version of what white people do. You have no culture. You have no language. You have no God. That's the white man's God. That Jesus. Everything you do, you nothing but a Oreo cookie. We are. We have become Oreo cookies. And I think the powers that be, the creation, whatever brought us into existence, I thank that power for being just, making manifest and bringing up people to. Help us return back to who we are. Matter of fact, not just return back to who we are, but become better than what we were. So this will never happen to us again. Did you know? See, the trickster, I want you to listen to me. The tricksters don't want you to believe that you are a victim. Oh, slavery is over. That's what they tell you. You ain't no victim. You ain't never been a slave. If my ancestors were slaves, and they were, they were victims, and I come from out of them, and I have not been rehabilitated since that time. I'm not an African because my ancestors was Africans. They did not believe in Jesus. Chances are they did not eat pork. I don't know how true that is, but one thing for sure, we are nothing like them. We have not been rehabilitated and returned back to being African, who we are. We are dark-skinned Europeans, white folks. That's what we are. So that makes us a victim just like that. You did not rehabilitate. You freed the slaves, but did not give them their God. You did not rehabilitate and teach us who we once were and encourage that. Because technically, you wanted us to stay slave, and we are still voluntary slaves today. And see, because you are ignorant of your situation, you don't know that all this is acceptable to you. And because you were born like this, just like your dog. At home, the only thing your dog know is eating out of a bowl and doing tricks and y'all put bow ties and sweaters on your dog. That dog has no idea how it is to live out in the wild and be a real dog. And so that's how we are. We have become the white man's pet. Have no idea of being free. The only life we know is captivity 
under the rule and the law and the mentality of Caucasian people. But that's coming to an end. It's over and done. Because the House Negro, the, the, the defense attorney, the real lawyer, is going to continue to fight to get you and I free. We're not, we don't want probation. We don't want to give, we don't want this illusion of freedom any longer. We want to be free, just like all the other people around this planet. Whether they are poor or rich, they are free. In the mind, as well as minus the physical chains. See, they fool you. You don't know what a victim is. A victim can be living or dead. We know about living victims. Those families that uh, lost loved ones in the Colorado shooting, they are victims. They, the family, did not get shot, but they lost a loved one. How can I not be a victim when I lost my ancestors? I lost my God. I lost my religion. I, I, I lost everything that made me African. I'm a victim. I read in a history book that the white man, the racist Caucasian people of this nation, you raped my grandmothers, castrated my fathers, lynched us from trees at will, you sick dogs on us, sprayed us with fire hoses. How can you tell me I'm not a victim? We are victims. But see, you listening to the prosecutor and you're listening to the defendant, these people, of course, and the Uncle Tom Sambo, you're listening to them. They are not looking out for your best interest and you not looking out for your best interest because you don't understand what has happened to you. You don't understand that you are a victim. You're letting a liar and deceivers, those who don't want you to benefit from your hurt and your pain like others have. You don't have to be living in order to be a victim. Our ancestors was victims. And just because they are gone, any type of damages that they deserve go to their children. We are their babies. We are their progeny. We are their children. And you hear some of these tacky, fake, so-called good white people, the first thing they'll tell us, you never was no slave. You don't deserve no reparations. Okay. Did you pay the slave reparations? What did you give them? See, the slick thing about it is, you know that they are 40 years dead. So you know you, you don't have to worry about them. But see, you want to trick the children, the family of the slaves, so that we don't stand up and raise our voice and seek the damages due to our ancestors. Because we don't need your welfare. We don't need nothing from this country except reparations from what this evil, wicked nation has done to our ancestors. We can take care of ourselves. And if we fail, then we fail because we've done it in our ignorance because we have your mentality. We are white people with black skin. White in the mind, European in the mind. That's why we are having trouble today moving forward in black revolution, moving forward in black nationalism because we have a European mind. That's all we know. So we have problems with that. But because, but let's say for instance, this uh, Colorado movie theater massacre. Let's say for instance, if this young man, James Holmes, was a billionaire, the families of the deceased can sue his estate and get money, monetary damages for the death of their loved ones. But their loved ones are the ones that paid the price. They are the ones 
that died. Why should the family get anything? See, in law, it makes no difference. Dead people can collect awards, monetary damages. This is why. See, you need to stop listening to these Uncle Tom's, these dark Europeans, these Sambo's, handkerchief here. We need to stop listening to them. Because this nation owes a lot to the black man and woman, the ex-slaves, the slaves of this nation. They know it. They know that you are victims. They know that you should and I, we have earned reward due to our ancestors over 400 years of suffering. And even the uh Attacks by dogs, sprayed with fire hoses, the lynching, in, into modern times. They ignore all these things. So why are you, Birmingham, the city of Birmingham, how many black people have they paid for the dogs that bit the citizens and the water hoses? This country ain't paying nobody nothing. We don't never get nothing. That shows you they don't care nothing about you, black man and woman. Can't you see that? Everything you are benefits Caucasian people. We are still slaves. Just a different form. In fact, we have become better slaves than our ancestors were. You think you're part of this red, white, and blue. The only part of this red, white, and blue that you are really a part of is when they send you on the front lines to get your head blown off or the blue ink or whatever, or black ink when you sign over taxes or when they take a club and bust you upside your head and beat you upside your face and your eye turns red, white, and blue. That's the closest to the love of red, white, and blue you're going to get in America. Because we are victims. This is why the racist Caucasian people of this uh, of this uh, country they deny us access to sue for reparations in the courts they have it set up so they make it difficult so that we cannot sue for reparations and they make it difficult for us to get the evidence that we need in order for us to prove our case in court because they know you are a victim. They know this country. I'm not talking about individual white folks. There are a lot of businesses that became rich that exist right now due to slavery. They don't want you to bother them because we are out. the monetary damages will be so high it will almost put them out of business. But see, it's against the law to sue somebody for so much it will put them out of business. But they don't want you and I to have nothing. Can't you see that this is evil? Can't you see this is wicked? Do you believe that anybody that they know that they owe you money do you believe that they're going to give you good advice. Have you ever been in a, in a courtroom or even watched on TV where a plaintiff go to, to the defendant and ask the, ask the defendant, what should I do? That's not going to happen because the defendant is not there and not working for your, the best interest. If you was in a car accident and you are suing Ford Motor Company, Ford Motor Company is going to try to get the case dismissed. They're going to try to do everything they can not to give you a dime. That's the situation that we are in right now. But if you have a good legal team, if you have good lawyers, then they're going to work night and day and they become passionate with you like family. If you see the lawyer that represents Trayvon Martin's family, he become, they said that, the, that that lawyer has become part of their family. He can feel that pain. 
These people, the house Negro, the Uncle Tom, they don't feel your pain. They don't understand you at all. They don't understand that you are beginning to awaken that something here is wrong. They don't understand that. We are all, no, we're not all Americans. We are not, everybody's being treated differently. And the worst people being treated is the, 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 the descendants of slaves born in America. At the minimum, the Native American people, they were given reservations. And even today, some of the Native American people, they get compensation checks, I believe, something like that. They get a little money too, due to what happened to their ancestors. The Japanese people, because of their internment in World War II, they were placed in these camps. They were paid a certain amount of money. And of course, y'all know, even to this day, the state of Israel is being compensated. And let me tell you something. See, all these people that's benefiting, none of them suffered. These are the children, the descendants of these people. But when it comes to black folks, they don't want to give you nothing. They turn their nose up like like we smell like feces. This is how much hate they have for you and I. Because they know how great we are. They know once we get on our feet. Because we show how bad we are. Because even during slavery, even during all this outright oppression, black the black man and woman in America, we did and was doing pretty good. Don't you know that we as a people, we had many brothers and sisters that were rich. Did you know that there was such thing as Black Wall Street, our own stock market? Did you know that there was over 60 black towns? The white man destroyed all that because he didn't want us to do good. But see, you don't know these things. If you go back and look at some of the old pictures, black people was proud. We all, we like to dress up and look all civil and just, woo, sharp. Now we have the material thing. A lot of us are rich, but we look like savages. See, they don't mind us being rich, looking like a savage and acting like a savage, a drunk, and some type of immoral people. But when we were back in the 20s and 30s or whatever, we showed class. They don't want us to see that. And, they, and we, we showed that we know how to use our brain and make money. We know how to build with our hands. And we know how to use our minds. They destroyed all these things. So, in conclusion, let me say this to us. Brothers and sisters, it's not about hate. See, they get you. First of all, there's nothing wrong with hate. If you are a religious believer, God hates. And in the scriptures, it says there's a time to love. Where's my watch? I didn't wear my watch. But there's a time to love. Give me some love. Mm. But there's a time to hate. This is the time to hate because you should not want to continue to be treated like you are savage and an animal, like you are, like you and I, we are dang fools. Because we're not. So it is time now also that you, brothers and sisters, you need to make up your mind. Settle for $500 or $20 when you deserve a thousand or get with the program and support any brother or sister, any black organization that is working for the best interest of our people. That's what we need to do. And that's what we're going to do. Those of us called field Negro. And I don't understand why house Negroes, handkerchief heads, dark Europeans, I don't see why they get so upset. Don't call me no Sambo. Don't call me a dark European. They get so upset. Look what you're doing. You're not saying, you're not doing anything to benefit our people. You settling for crumbs when you should be getting the whole slice of bread for us. Because you fear white folks and you are comfortable in your oppression. And you love America. I don't love America. 
I'm not comfortable in this. I don't care nothing about what America. I don't care about their gold. I don't care about the rims. I don't care about their cocaine. I don't care about nothing. I don't care about their beer. I don't care about nothing of this country. I want my own. And the best for the best interest of our people is for us to get our own. Get our own. That's what you tell your children. Get grown, get out of here, and get your own. The black man and woman, the descendants of slaves in America, we should, we get enough money and have enough resources in this country, we should be looking out to evolve out of this. So we can stop having Trayvon Martin. So we can stop having these brothers and sisters turn on each other and shoot themselves, kill each other in Chicago and Houston and Tampa and wherever we are at in these big cities and small towns. Because we will be proud of what we build and what we ourselves. Right now, we have no self-worth. We don't see no value when you see a black man. You don't see any value. When you see a black woman, you see no value. That's why you can come on YouTube and black men bash black women and black women bash black men. You see yourself as enemies. You see yourself with no value, something to spit on because your massa spits on us. You spit on a black man. You spit on a black woman and the white man and the Chinese man and all these other suckers around the earth look at you and all of them spit on both of you. And you wiping both of you, y'all wiping the spit. You thinking it's coming from the black man and the black woman thinking it's coming from the, the black woman or whatever. Did I get that mixed up? <laughs> Talking so fast. And the spit coming from everybody. Because nobody give a damn about you. And why should they? If the black man and woman, you don't give a damn about yourself, why should anybody else care? So it's up to us. What type of lawyer do you want to hire? Do you want a lawyer that will send you to jail and give you the death penalty? Or do you want a lawyer that will get win, help you win thousands and millions of dollars? It's up to you. So it's according to what you want. And it's not about it's not about being a beggar. It's not about being uh, all these different things, lazy and trifling, you getting what you deserve because of your personal suffering today because you are a victim, but also because of the suffering of our people for over 400 years. has nothing to do with hate. It's about justice. But of course, as you know, there is no justice in America. So I would suggest to us to get our resources together, and leave this hellified place. This is your hell. A white man's heaven is a black man's hell. We felt nothing and lived in nothing but hell ever since our people stepped on the, on the shores of North America with these devils. And that's just the truth, the bottom line. So make up your mind. This is the changing you must make up your mind. Decide what you want to do. Be a Sambo. Be a dark European. Be an American. Or come join and support and help. Not just talk. And help this movement called black liberation. Black power. Black nationalism. The choice is up to you. Settle for crumbs. Or settle for the presidency of your own nation. Make, it your, make your own laws. Make your own school system. Everything is about you. Instead of living in another man's house. And he don't care nothing about you. Thank you for listening. This is your brother Tali Keeping Raw. I love us. That's why I take the time to make these videos. I really do. And a lot of us, we need to mature ourselves and grow up. And stop tripping off personal junk. And we need to get on the on the battlefield and win this war against the real enemy because ain't nobody black out there is my enemy need to start straighten our own personal selves up and get on the battlefield thank you for listening it's your brother Talik even Ra this was
and is <laughs> the reality's temple on earth. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, the mighty, mighty, mighty uh, Angel Snub Number Seven. And uh, I just want to be a little casual here. Of course, as many of you know, that there was a shooting in Colorado. I believe it was Denver. Was it the city of Denver? I'm not sure what city. But y'all know it was a very big news. And I want to tell you honestly that it is a tragic thing. And my heart does, and I feel sadness and send my condolence to all those who lost loved ones in Colorado. But I want to say this to you. It's very difficult for me to really begin or continue to feel or have feelings for these tragedies. And I'm going to tell you, this, is, this will not be the last. It was not the first. And it's going to become worse and worse. Why should I shed tears and feel a mourning when who was shedding tears and who was dedicating a day of mourning for those who were enslaved, my ancestors, those who were lynched, those who were castrated? Where was the day of mourning as Trayvon Martin? lay dead on the street in fact i'm going to send a few thousand dollars to his killer where is the morning for all the black people all over this country that shot down in the streets day in and day out where is the national day of mourning for our death where is it now in this situation i guess there are Caucasian people and black folks in a different variety of races involved in this shooting. But my thing is, what if there wasn't any white folks or anybody involved in this killing, in this murder? Would there be a national day of mourning? Black life in America has little value. Murderers can go on TV and tell the world that God caused this to happen. God made this. And everybody's all hunky dory. There's no outrage. Why would a God of love and peace, and some of y'all are Christians, why would you even allow somebody to have come out of their mouth that God would ordain something like that? The murder of this young, unarmed boy. But this just goes to show the hypocrisy. And now it's coming down to the Nitty gritty. That's what Gladys Knight and the Pips had a song a long time ago. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Now you are seeing the fall of America. We are in the process of the fall of Western civilization as we know it. And I will tell you what's so ironic about it. Since many of y'all are Christians, then let me relate this to some uh, biblical scripture very simple because in the Genesis God told Moses to get his people out of Egypt because God had a problem with Egypt was Egypt righteous or unrighteous was Egypt good or bad of course we know that Egypt was an enemy to God and God had to punish Egypt for her sins, for her wickedness, for what she done to Moses and his people. But if Moses did not get his people out of the way, then the plagues, the punishment that was to fall upon Egypt would also hurt Moses 
by his people who did not deserve to be hurt. So what I'm saying to those of us who are the descendants of slaves born in America, and I will continue to tell you, and many folks tell us all the time, the black man and woman of America, it is time for you to leave. We have had many Moses come upon, come from among us. They tell us that we should be become independent and get ourselves out of here. But we refuse because we are afraid to leave the only home that we know. We, many of us, are in love with Egypt. We are in love with that which, of course, God has declared that have earned punishment. You want to stay here. So as long as you black man, as long as you black woman, y'all want to stay in a place. In ancient times or in the Bible, God has determined that Egypt is to be punished. In this situation, the Western civilization, the Western world as we know it, America and Europe, they are on a path and have been on a path to self-destruction. This is what we are witnessing. We are witnessing the chickens that come home to roost. The same terrorism that America and Europe has put on other people, other dark people around the world, now it is coming upon your shores. And what is so ironic is that your own people, though your own people in Europe, your own citizens, are going to punish your butt. I wanted to say something else, but I, I got to try to, I'm always trying to clean my language up because I want younger people to be able to listen to what I say. The same terrorism, the same murder, the same exploitation, the same things that you have done to others, now you are going to face. You got to take your shoes off to get on a plane. Now, you can't even go to the movies. You scared. It's fear all over this country. The same fear that you give other people when you drop your bombs, bring in your tanks, and do the dirt that you do for whatever reason. And that reason is always a selfish, evil reason hiding behind democracy because you really don't care nothing about democracy because you will assassinate uh, democratically elected presidents just as quick as anybody else. You don't care. You after, you after godhood. You want to police the world. You want everybody to be white people. You want everybody to worship white Jesus. You want everybody to eat McDonald's. You want everybody to, to say the word. You want everybody to say that apple pie is a favorite all over the world. You want everybody to be like Europeans and white folks. It ain't gonna happen. There is no power in the history of humanity that has been able to survive under crooked circumstance. And America itself was born out of criminal activity. So since America was born out of criminal activity, how do you expect good things to happen in a criminal nation? Oh, that shows that you are insane. I'm sorry, but I just get so happy. I'm, I'm so happy because even though I might personally suffer, even though we suffer because we're going to stay here while the while this world is falling. We don't have to, but we love this these devils so much. We are we are not going to be like Moses and his people and get the hell out of town. They didn't know where they was going. They just knew they had to leave Egypt. You don't have to know where you're really going. Find a spot and let's go and get out of this. I'm telling you. And there is no God. These people are destroying themselves. They are becoming their own terrorists. They are arrogant. You can't tell them nothing. They are judge, jury, and executioner. But when it's their turn, they can't handle it. This is a violent nation. The movies are violent. The cartoons are violent. Everything about it is violent. And you don't expect that something like this that happened in Colorado could happen when you feed the people violence day in and day out then the people are drinking liquor they're doing drugs legal and illegal drugs messing with their brain messing with their mind you don't think nothing gonna happen 
You don't think there's not going to be any kind of result or consequence? The people are fed sex every day. There's always some naked woman in somebody's face with her vagina in your face. Some man slinging his penis in your face every day. You see, you see uh, images of sex. And so is it a shock? That, the, that pedophiles are coming from out of everywhere and they are attacking your children. And people, people are just going obsessed with this sex crap. And the homosexuals want rights because just because they lay with another man or lay with another woman. I want rights. What kind of rights? They're, you shouldn't have to have no kind of rights. But it's, as long as it's sexual, we are sexualized. More and more white people in this country are getting caught stealing. And you, the Caucasian people, those who are in Europe, those white folks in, in, in America, you don't want to accept responsibility and make proper choices for your own actions. So this young white boy, he's, uh, something was wrong with him mentally. He had a bad childhood, but when it comes to black folks, nothing, oh, we just, we just criminals. But there's always something there's also there's always something mentally disturbed with white folks. That's why you have an excuse for your behavior. But black folks, we don't. We are the most tortured people in history. Mentally, suffering all kinds of mental oppression, but we are normal. We know exactly what we're doing. Slavery was a long time ago, of course, as you know. But that's all right. And this young boy, white boy. He was college educated. You got a college educated killer. Is that what they're teaching in in uh, your schools now? How to murder folks? How to plan murders? This is the end of Western civilization.